This is Bali City, a small friendly city in a small beautiful country on the Yucatan Peninsula. It is considered to be one of the world's best kept secrets due to its strategic and important location at the crossroads of the regions. Belize's population is approximately 333,200. Belize's young population comprises of 70% of that number. This is where I grow and live. Accusation is of ten times the projection of guilt. Them never take the blame and sin animals with a jinx. I wonder how them feel the Babylon ship has seen. Repatriation is abiding our midst. This pundit reactors are so we call them. I've been seen by the new year as well. And I got my youth football school, I used to play football. I was like a child about that man, and my friends there. And I really want to see a change in my community where I live in now. More education, I work like jumping youths and things. And my environment, trying to think more positive and things. Belize City was once the capital of the country, before the independence from Great Britain. Today, it remains the principal port and commercial center for the entire country. Unfortunately, it has been held back in many ways due to the concentration of crime in the city, particularly murders affecting young people ages 15 to 35. The south side of this little city is considered to be the epicenter of gun violence. The areas I tend to avoid, mm, I would say behind Civic, um, Vernon Street coming off the, um, the stoplight, um, behind Gwen Liz, the the main the main areas I would I would you would see me travel is probably Jenosher and Raccoon Street and Kings Park. Those are the main key areas I would travel because Jenosher, yes, it's dangerous, but then everyone from the area knows me, so I don't have a problem going in and out. I think bribery. Um, most of the people on the south side are poor, so they would want to feel like they're at home and being in a gang you feel comfortable around friends and they influence you into doing a lot of things that will help you to get stuff so i think they're bribed by that i don't i don't think about it that much and because then i can't say where i'll be i know i, I don't want to be no i don't want to do a part of it now as in i don't know where i want to be but i don't want to do a part of it now my community haven't changed as much, just like uh, it changed from swamp to streets and well I didn't really know that my parents told me that because you know I was a baby and the influence, it didn't really have no influence from on me because my family keep, keep me doing positive stuff so that I would not be caught up in the negative stuff because if you are not doing nothing it is easy to be caught up in the, in, in the bad stuff that is happening. Outside, how this thing worked out. You know, really, you have a choice, right? But you don't really have a choice. You see? Because then, due to how you grew up and the environment you grew up in, you all could be one of the two things. You could join the people then, where they do fool, or you could get the one where we get the fool too. You see? And I look for it. being a fool and get the last look to me. So. First of all, as far as I am concerned, there is no south side and north side Belize. I believe that our young people are valuable across the country. Our young people has to be the asset of our country. No country can develop without its youth. But at the same time, our population is 65% youth based. And as a result of that, more needs to be done to ensure that our young people have the nurturing that they need, the opportunities that they deserve to accomplish not just being valuable, but to accomplish nation building. 
Even though the government of Belize has been providing the Ministry of Education with 23% of its budget, which is the second largest percentage, it is still not enough, as 30% of the children of school age are still being excluded from their human right to an education. The crisis, this is a crisis indeed, but we know that um, all this could be eliminated or kicked down to a, a, um, a level if we have outlets for our um, youngsters. I mean, uh, not only about basketball court, they could be involved in something meaningful, not to play an instrument where they could have an income. Right? You know that we're, um, we're, we're big on tourism, um, the tourists are coming in. I mean, all over you walk over the world, you, you'll find at a train station or at, um, at a hotel, you'll find people are playing an instrument and sitting there playing some kind of blues, jazz, whatever. And you just pass and show them a coin or two, right? It's an income, and it's income for those people. I think if we get our youngsters into such thing, they could form different core tech and what have you to just perform for, for tourists or for locals as such, right? Where they could gain um, gainful employment. Um, I, think, I think one of the things that would help the Belizean youth uh, would be more job opportunities. That's not. There's not an easy answer in that. It, it's. Uh, it's an. It's going to be an economic situation, because uh, young people, when they get out of school, jobs are hard to find. They're tourist jobs, and uh, we're. I'm, I'm happy for the tourists that come because that provides jobs and incomes for many people. But there needs to be more, um, and I, I would. I think it would be helpful if youth could go to school knowing that when they graduate. At whether it's high school or college level, there will be entry level positions for them in some field they, they have trained for. No, I don't think that when you go and apply for a job, people can look at you and say, Oh, you're from this era, so I won't give you this job. Mm -hmm. No, I think that, in all fairness, I think that it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that taking hold on Belizeans and leaders in Belizeans because I could know more of IT or literature or, or any field than someone else but if that person knows the owner of the, the business then definitely they'll hire them over me. This program is a program where the government they have an um, apprenticeship program where the Basically, a join for the first two weeks that life skills, like to tell her, like what it do, not really make no sense, and that like they can't really tell her what to do. Can nobody could tell nobody what to do? You see, like, nobody can tell you to do something good, and you have to do it. Or do something bad, and you have to do it. You pick what you want to do. And so then the first two weeks, and us get the right part, set us straight. Then after that two weeks, there they'll pick one trade where you want to land. And then they find a work environment to make you go on, to make you prove yourself that you actually want something in a life. Well, um, we have we have artwork, and I made this, and I had to do this for school, and I didn't really know what to do. And my father say, um, just do your hands because without your hands, you are hardly able to do anything. And so I just. They are a little love and then I made inside of the hand like a love and this is not the only art that I do I do belts I make chains and it helped me eat a lot of time I am alive those words you say didn't hurt. They only drag out tears from my eyes and flee. Pain upon sorrows ignite flames on my bone marrows. They kept me hopeless, shattered, miserably battered. They sent me to hell, jail, abyss. They crucified me, cuffed me, killed me, yet I am alive. I am alive. 
those shackles from slavery, those whips rewarded for bravery. You shot me with bullets of racism, stabbed me with knives, fired from favoritism. You discriminated me because I'm black, African, Caribbean, because I couldn't listen to your words of failure, words from an unclean mouth, those words that punched me and knocked me out. I gained confidence and realized I am alive, I am alive, I am a screamer. I scream for my voice to be heard, the voice of an innocent child, the voice that even through poverty and perplexity still says I am alive. I am alive because I have survived. Hope always there. Hope always there, but you can't see. You all look hope. You all look hope that hope there. You see, for me, I, I find something for hope for. You see, I see, I, I look on it and I know that the right side I'm in the door. I look on it and I know that where I'm in the door, not really what get me no way or make one difference in you know, what I do in a life. If something hard to you, uh, you could say two different ways to make it good. You know, watch your path right out. Simple as this. This right on each other. You know, if they want to make life better for somebody, give somebody who needs something for themselves, want a job to chop the path. You know, that, that's right there. So alone, I take off five people found something simple on the street. Five better than none. That way, I look on it. Hope, you all look for hope, hope. How do we stop the river of blood? Build a dam so it does not flood over. At the center, as a youth center, it should have all facilities, um, all equipment in terms of um, if you are dealing with bodybuilding, you should have some, some sort of bodybuilding because the youth need this as, as well. The swimming pool, we should have our track and field. Right, with the authentic, with the, um, with the track, laying down a football field, um, basketball court, we should have all these there. Um, for youngsters who, who might be a side of um, the disabled can't really be out there in those, in those um, sports as well. Right, there could be a nice somewhere where we have kids playing chess. The resource center should involve an educational system where poor and unfortunate kids can go and learn things that would benefit them in the future such as a trade or, or learning to you know learning simple basic skills that would be needed in the city they need a lot of sports facilities um starting from a young age children should start get influenced into sports so that their times may be occupied so they do not have any time to go out there and rob or steal or even practice the kill. I like the idea of a resource center because when you talk about a resource center, you're talking about the overall wellness of individuals. Many times in Belize when we hear resource center, people think about a center where you go to use computers or where you go to do homework. And that is just one dimension of a resource center. And so we need to look not just at the academics and how we can nurture the academics, but we need to look also at how can we help our young people to start dreaming and to start dreaming big. Creativity, teach people how to do different stuff like cook, clean, do like, say, for example, play music, draw, do something, because majority of the time, we have a lot of people that have a lot of talent, but they don't know, they do not know how to use it, or there is not a specific place that they can go and express what they need to do. But whether a community center or several community centers are built in our community, we know that the change must come from within our homes and within our hearts. We are ready to save this generation. Behind bars, they show us guns, the ballistics, the faces of young statistics, and we show them, we show them new voices, a reflection of conscious choices, a replica of positivity, mixed sensations, but a vivid imagery. We speak to the deaf, speak for the mute, we are the voices, the voices of conscious, the youth.